Hi everyone, and welcome to another quick orchestration video. The goal in this series is to find short orchestral excerpts, even just a few measures in total, that I think can teach us a lot about orchestration and orchestral composition. Rachmaninoff's Opus 45 Symphonic Dances from 1940 is such an amazing composition. It's difficult to choose a single moment from that piece to discuss today. So if you haven't already listened to or studied that piece, I highly recommend it. This moment is from near the beginning of the first movement to that piece, and it's really all about chord voicing and instrumentation. Let's hear the excerpt. Before we get into the orchestration of this moment, let's look at a piano reduction of these four measures. There's nothing particularly special about this moment, but if you've been following my channel, you'll know that recently I've done a few live streams on orchestral chord voicings. And one of the things that I've emphasized is chord note spacing, which is really what this excerpt is all about. To achieve such a rich and almost heavy sound, Rachmaninoff takes into consideration how the bass register is spaced, specifically the bottom of the bass clef staff. We're dealing with triads and a dominant seventh chord, and that's it as far as harmonic content. Rachmaninoff doesn't shy away from voicing fifths, fourths, and even thirds towards the bottom of the bass clef staff. I'm highlighting in orange those intervals that sit below the middle of the bass clef staff. Overall, his spacing is quite low, but that's okay as long as the instrumentation is carefully considered, which I'll get into in just a moment. You might also notice that for how rich the low end of these chords are, the upper register barely ascends past the middle of the treble clef staff. So overall, just by looking at the notes in this reduction, Taking into consideration the dynamics, you might expect a rich and powerful sound, but one that's fairly dark. Rachmaninoff's orchestration of this moment is very woodwind and string heavy. Let's take a look at the woodwinds first. One of the simplest and most effective ways to orchestrate a chordal passage like this one is to make sure that each individual section, like strings, brass, or woodwinds, can stand on its own. Meaning, if I just play the woodwinds here alone, the chords should be balanced from top to bottom. Perhaps the most challenging aspect about this moment from an orchestrational standpoint is that the overall texture has a descending trajectory, which means that the instruments that work effectively in the beginning might not work as effectively at the end due to now being out of their range. In the first two measures, flutes and oboes are doubled, flute one and oboe one together, mostly a third above flute two and oboe two. In the third measure, however, both top and bottom parts descend out of the flute register and the bottom line outside of the oboe register. So Rachmaninoff brings in two clarinets in unison below the two oboes in unison. By the way, in the first two measures, the flute register does not project well across an orchestra, even at fortissimo. So this treble woodwind timbre is skewed towards oboes. In the third and fourth measures, the low fortissimo oboe timbre stands out over the clarinet timbre in this range. Meanwhile, bass clarinet and bassoons are filling out a balanced bass register with contrabassoon occasionally entering when the lowest notes fall outside of the normal bassoon register. As I pointed out earlier, there are some very low voiced chords here, especially towards the end, with the major third and fifth positioned towards the bottom of the bass clef staff. That really contributes to the dark, almost punchy quality to this texture. The horns occupy the middle register portion of this texture, and they are the only brass instruments present. Trombones and trumpets would certainly add intensity and volume, but Rachmaninoff must have felt that if present, those instruments would be dominant, so that the overall texture would skew towards an intense brass timbre. I'm showing the transposed notes here, by the way, which appear a fifth above sounding pitch. Like the winds, the horns are balanced from a chord voicing standpoint, and also like the woodwinds, the lowest horns descend fairly low in their register, especially towards the end of the passage. That helps contribute to this punchy texture. I won't bother highlighting which of the notes from the reduced part that the strings have because they basically have all of the notes. And that's possible in this moment because Rachmaninoff has the strings playing double stops on occasion. Orchestral double stops are really useful for adding volume and intensity 
while sacrificing a bit of intonation and expressive timbre. This seems like the perfect opportunity, though, and Rachmaninoff sticks to mostly sixths in upper strings and fifths in cellos, while also taking advantage of the open strings. So he's very careful not to place any overly difficult stops in any of the string parts. Also notice that each note is a down bow, which adds additional power and heaviness to the sound. So overall, I would say strings and perhaps horns dominate the texture here, but that's not to say that woodwinds don't contribute to the overall texture and timbre as well. Note that timpani is briefly present, emphasizing a few of the notes in this passage and adding additional thump and bass presence. Let's hear these four measures once more. I thought it might be interesting to now compose my own short excerpt in a similar style with similar orchestration. Using similar harmonic motion between triads, I came up with a simple four measure phrase. Overall, it's maybe a bit too similar to the Rachmaninoff, so without composing any new chords, I've added a bit of melodic ornamentation. My plan is to let these four measures evolve into something that eventually sounds more original while maintaining some influence from Rachmaninoff. I then orchestrated this as close to Rachmaninoff as I could manage with the same instruments present, using similar articulations, dynamics, chord voicings where possible, and double stops in the strings. From there, I decided that I wanted to experiment with the rhythms to try and make it less rigid. So here I'm using quite a bit of syncopation and some accented offbeats, but otherwise the music is fairly identical. I like the rhythms here, but I think the syncopation would really only work with something else present that's more metrically on the beat. So when orchestrating this, I decided to bring in some low percussion. I have toms, a tenor drum, bass drum, and eventually a snare drum playing 16th notes. And I have them enter two measures early to set everything up. I think this makes the syncopation way more effective. In version 3, I take the syncopation concept to another level by offsetting the treble and bass clef parts of the texture by an eighth note, while also making a few minor adjustments here and there to the ornamentation on the top notes in the treble clef staff. When orchestrating this version, I decided to keep the unpitched percussion timbre present. Like I said earlier, I'm letting this texture evolve over time and I really like how these 16th notes in percussion add an intensity and rhythmic drive to the texture. I'm pretty happy with how that's sounding. I've adjusted the rhythms, added some additional percussion instrument, but now I wanna see what happens if I change the harmonies to make them a bit more complex. In this final version, I've kept the right hand the same, but I've adjusted the left hand to a new root and fifth for each chord. Similar to how I offset the left and right hand rhythms in the last version, here I'm offsetting the left and right hand harmonies by adjusting tonal centers. Here's the orchestrated version. Once again, I'm sticking to the same basic configuration plus some low percussion. The end result, like the Rachmaninoff, is a heavy, punchy texture with a lot of low energy. So that's it for this one. I hope you've enjoyed it. I definitely recommend listening to the entirety of Rachmaninoff's Symphonic Dances. If you're interested in the MIDI files, Music XML files, Dorico, Cubase, and Studio One files from this video, check out the link to my Patreon page in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.